Good morning. So thrilled to see all of you today. Praise the Lord. It's good to be together again this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. Glorious day. The sun is shining. The grass is green from the rain we had yesterday. And oh, what a what a glorious day. What a wonderful day. Just, um, praise the Lord. Thrilled to see all of y'all gather on around. Get your coffee cups and get your um, your diet Dr. Pepper or whatever you happen to be um, have in your hand this morning and get your word of God and find a place to settle down this morning and let's uh, let's let's get into some worship and get into the word today just so thrilled to to be able to spend this time with you today you know it's not gonna be long we're gonna be able to be back together and um, I'm just looking forward to that but for right now we're just so thankful that we have this opportunity to, to come and to do this so I want to take just a minute um, right here at the very beginning to uh, to remind you all to please go over and um, like and follow our Facebook page you are watching right now from our Facebook group but we need you to go over and like and follow our Facebook page because that is where we're going to be uh, continuing to stream from once we start back together uh, with in-person services so you want to make sure that you're connected there and connect anybody that um, you feel like maybe is on this page and might not be getting this message so we definitely want you to to go over there and like that page so that you won't miss a beat uh, with what we're putting out there and, and with uh, what we're streaming and everything so we're um, we're encouraging you to do that and also uh, particularly if you have prayer requests um, that you need to get sent in please um, text those to my husband and um, we will um, definitely be praying about about that so um, again just thankful to have you this morning I want to say I want to take just a moment right here at the very onset um, to to pause and let us remember this is Memorial Day weekend and this is a time that is <clears throat> designated or set aside to remember those who uh, who gave all who gave all for our for our great country and uh, I just want us to do that at, the, at this particular moment um, if you uh, have served in the armed forces uh, we thank you we, we um, our hats are off to you we salute you and say thank you for the sacrifices that you made to do that um, we, we specifically want to remember those um, who gave who gave all so father we just thank you so much that you have given us the privilege Lord to live in this in this beautiful glorious land of the free and father we know that it comes at a, at a price at a high price and Lord, I just thank you for those who were willing to give all for so that we could have the freedom that we have and the freedom to worship you. And, and God, I, I thank you for those that have, have um, those families that have sacrificed, Lord, and, and they've lost loved ones, Lord, who have fought for the cause, Lord Jesus, that gives us the right, Lord, to, to stand and to protest, that gives us the right of free speech, the right to assemble, Lord, um, all these rights we've been hearing about so much in the news lately. I'm so thankful for those that were willing to give. Um, that, that, that we're willing to give all um, and those that, that sacrificed much, Lord Jesus, and those that continue to sacrifice, Lord, and we just thank you for them. And Lord, may we always be mindful, Lord, that freedom is not free. And Lord, that you, you, Lord Jesus, you purchased our freedom, our spiritual freedom, which is the most important. You purchased that on the cross of Calvary. And that certainly was not free, Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you for that. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to worship with me this morning. We're going to do a couple of older hymns as we get started. Um, the first one is just deeper, deeper. Okay.
passage of scripture um, in the book of James chapter 4. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And I just thought about, this is the 10th, I believe the 10th Sunday that we have been apart. But you know what? God's never left us. Amen? God's right here. His presence is so strong right here in this room where I'm at. And I pray that you have invited his presence to be very strong right there where you are at. But you know, that, that passage goes on to say, you know, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And it also says, Clean, cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. And I was reminded this morning, 10 weeks, 10 weeks, Lord, that I have had where the world has slowed down a little bit. What have I done with it? And the Lord just, just whispered this, this question to me a couple days ago. Are you closer to me than you were 10 weeks ago? done with my 10 weeks? Have I drawn closer to Jesus? If I'm not closer to Jesus, guess what? It's because I choose not to be. It's because either I have moved away or, or maybe, maybe I didn't like where God was leading, so I just quit following. But I want you to, I want you to stop and I want you to, like me, I want you to examine your heart this morning and say, Lord Jesus, I'm yours. God, I'm yours. And Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want to stick closer to you than I've ever been. Lord, these are uncertain days, but I know one thing of a certainty. That where you lead, Lord Jesus, I'm going to follow. Lord, I want to stick so close to your side. And when they see you, they see me. And when they see me, you, they, they see you.
this your prayer. Not my
to you or to pull back and God it's my desire that we draw closer to you God you've taken so many distractions out of our life and Lord we ought to be a, a walk with you like we've never known before so Lord I pray for those today today their walk has become shallow their faithfulness has wavered in this time God, that you would cause us to be drawn closer to you. In thy name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for your faithfulness, giving to tithe and offerings and commitment to missions, giving by text to give, by the mail, uh, other ways that you've been giving. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being patient. I want to take just a moment and just to share with you that we have a plan in place and we're working on that plan to come back safely together uh, I don't like the term new normal I just don't like it I think God broke us and took us away from everything so that when we come back there shouldn't be nothing normal about it it ought to be all new he didn't break us for us to go back to what we had. That's right. He broke us that we could go back to something new, something exciting, something worth worshiping Him over. May we not want to go back to what is normal, but may we want to go back to something that is new, anointed, directed, and guided by the Holy Spirit. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, Turn with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 9. While you're turning there, Numbers, chapter 9, uh, there's, there's so many prayer requests that we have that, that I want to bring to you. There's many that have sent me emails and sent texts to me about prayer requests and a lot of personal things that are happening, but we have a lot that just need a touch from the Lord. They've got some outpatient surgery scheduled. Uh, they have family members that are dealing with COVID-19. We have people in the nursing home that are dealing with it. Uh, we have a lot of decisions that are being made across our state with family members. Uh, we, we're seeing a lot of things happening, uh, a lot of openings up. Things are starting to open back up. There is daylight at the end of the tunnel. But when we get out of that daylight, when this tunnel is opened up, like I said a moment ago, it's going to look a little different. Things are going to be a little different. And I pray that during this time, this eight to ten weeks that we've had, where we've been sheltered in place, that you've gotten closer to God. You've gotten very close to Him. I want you to pray with me. And, and I, I mean this very sincerely. I, we have a great, great unity among our board and leaders and church leaders. Man, I love those guys. They love me. And we're just walking together in unity. But there's a lot of churches that are struggling when to open, when not to open, what's going on, what's not going on. And I want you just to pray with me right now that God would just bring unity to the body of Christ. He never intended 
for there to be disunity during this season. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for your church around the world that has been affected, God, not only in our small community, but around this world, every ministry of every type is having to reevaluate what they can do and how they can do it and when they can do it safely for their community. God, I pray for wisdom for our missionaries. God, I pray that you give direction and guidance to national leaders. You give guidance and direction to local leaders, local pastors. May your Holy Spirit speak directly to each and every one of us. Give each and every one of us that guidance that we need. And we'll honor you for it. In thy name we pray. Amen. Numbers chapter 9, starting at verse 15 through 23. It has always been amazing to me that the children of Israel, once they left Egyptian bondage, God would choose to lead them by day with a cloud and by night with a pillar of fire. It's an amazing story that's going to, it's going to follow them all the way through their journey, giving guidance, giving direction. And this is what God does with us. I'm so thankful today that I don't have to look for a sign. I don't have to look for a cloud in the daytime. I don't have to look for the fire at night. But I've got the Holy Spirit that will guide and direct me. And, and my wife and I were talking about that earlier this week, that are we listening to the Holy Spirit or are we listening to things around us? Brothers and sisters, we need to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life. He is there to give comfort. He is there to give direction. He's there to give guidance. And we need to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament, the book of Numbers, chapter 9, verse 15 through 23. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle. Namely, the tent of the testimony, and even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. So at night it was like fire, until the morning it was a cloud. So it was a way. The cloud covered it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. This is the tabernacle. This is where the Holy of Holies are. It's in the center of the camp of the nation of Israel. The children of Israel surround this in a very strategic way that they've got them placed. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 9, verse 17, when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after the children of Israel journeyed in a place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. So when the cloud would go up and move, the children of Israel would start moving because the presence of God was moving. So let's read a little further. Numbers chapter 9, verse 18. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as a cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. When the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle, many days then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. Verse 21. And so it was that when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, and the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night, that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Whether it were two days or a month or a year, the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But it was taken up, they journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they rested in their tents. And at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Very interesting text. The, the fire by night and the cloud by day would center over the tabernacle that they had built in the wilderness. And when the fire by night would start to move, or the cloud by day would start to move, they would sound the trumpet. They would sound the horn of assembly. And people would start gathering together, gathering their belongings to move. It was an anticipation that when God had them move, they moved. Some of the revelations that God would reveal 
were placed upon the people in the Holy of Holies that no one else saw but the high priest. But what was seen by everybody every day was the cloud by day and the fire by night. I understand as well as you do, God spoke to Moses individually. God spoke to the high priest individually. God would speak to individuals behind the veil. But understand with me, the glories of the pillar and the cloud were seen by absolutely everyone. No one was left out. No one in the tribe of Israel were left out of this. Day and night, they adapted their lifestyle of every circumstance that surrounded upon this very simple thought. When God moves, I move. When God doesn't move, I don't move. And, but they got up every day with anticipation that it, this may be the day. They watched every afternoon with anticipation. This may be the afternoon. They went to bed at night thinking, we may even move tonight. Now I'll go ahead and tell you, we as a church world need to be ready for the rapture of the church that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, he could come back. But you've got to understand, that anticipation of the Lord returning should have been stirred in our heart more than ever before in the last two months. There's been a lot of things that have happened prophetically, a lot of things that have happened on a national basis and a local basis that ought to cause our hearts to be so tuned that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, he could rapture the church out. But the nation of Israel here, it says that whatever was going on in their life, they followed that cloud by day or that fire by night. Go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 13. Verse 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them the light to go day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud day by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. The cloud never left. The fire never left. It was with them constantly. Matter we know, according to Numbers, Chapter 9, verse 16. So it was always the cloud covered it by the day and appearance of the fire by night. What are you saying here? The cloud regulated every movement for the nation of Israel. When it removed itself from over the tabernacle and started to move, the congregation again knew it was time to move. The whole camp was prepared to march. The trumpets would sound. Two silver trumpets would sound. And they'd start moving. It became a source of strength. It became a source of others looking to them and knowing that it was not impossible to follow God. That God would lead them. The cloud never faltered. The cloud never failed. The fire never faltered or it never failed. It always led them in the right place, at the right direction, at the right time. But can I remind you of something? They were blindly going in places they had never gone before. Now, I'm going to give you just a little simple thought here, and we'll move back to the Scriptures. Turn with me, if you would, to the Isaiah chapter 42, verse 16. Isaiah 42, verse 16. And I will bring the, the blind by a way that they knew not, and I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. Isaiah 42, 16. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. Can I make a very simple application here? And I want you to, I want you to hear me very clearly. No one has never ever been where we're at today. No other church has experienced what we're experiencing today. No other denomination has experienced what we're experiencing today. No other missionary. Now we realize that there was a pandemic in the early 1920s and 1918-16s. We understand that. But we are generations away from that. 
I want you to understand something very simple. Go back and look at this text. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. God is going to take us out of this <clears throat> in ways that we've not even looked at. I realize there's rules and regulations. I realize that we've been given perimeters by the government. We've been given perimeters by leadership, and I, I don't mind any of that. But I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, it's like the blind leading the blind. We have no idea what is going to take place. We have no idea what it's going to look like six weeks from now, six months from now, even a year from now. now. There's a lot of speculation. But one thing that I know without a shadow of a doubt is this scripture right here. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not, and I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Brothers and sisters, we're going to do and be what we never thought we would do and be as a church body. And because of this, we have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I will make darkness light before them. Crooked things straight, these things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Holy Spirit is not going to leave you and I. We're coming up on Pentecost Sunday. And I want you to understand something. The church at Pentecost did not know what the next week, the next month, or the next year looked like. But they knew that they, the Holy Spirit was there to guide them and direct them. And they knew that by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the words that Jesus had left them, that they were going to overcome. They were going to succeed. And that's what we have to get in our hearts as individuals and as corporate bodies and as local assemblies. We have to realize we are blindly going in places we've never gone before. We're blindly doing things we've never done before. But we know who's in charge. It's the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we pursue in a direction that is opposite of our expectations. We may do something that is totally contrary to everything that we've seen. But if God leads us, we're going to do it. Can I remind you very quickly that that's what happened to the children of Israel? They could have very easily taken another path, but God put them right in front of the Red Sea, right there to prove to them that it was not what they thought, but it was what he knew was going to come to pass under the guidelines, under the guidance of the pillar by day and the fire by night. The children of Israel encamped in front of the Red Sea and being overtaken by Pharaoh and the Egyptians' armies, they thought all was lost. But God was in complete control. Because when the cloud had moved, it had moved them in the right in the direction that God wanted them to go. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 1 through 3. Exodus 15, 1 through 3. After things take place, after God causes Moses to step out in faith, after he causes the nation of Israel to be still and see the salvation of the Lord, then they're able to rejoice of how they got through it. There will be a day that we will turn back and we will rejoice how our local leadership, our national leadership, people got us through this hour that we're in. We will turn back and we'll rejoice of the goodness of God. Exodus 15, 1 through 3. Then sang Moses, the children of Israel, the song unto the Lord, <clears throat> spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he hath thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I'll prepare him a habitation. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Between a rock, and a hard place. Between the Red Sea and the children of Israel and the Egyptian army behind them, Pharaoh is breathing down their neck. They have been led to this spot by the cloud by day and the fire by night. We understand that it's going to go between them and the nation of Israel as they cross through the Red Sea, which is another beautiful message in itself, that it brings confusion to those that are around. But as they've moved forward and moved through this, Salvation came to them. Victory came to them. Did it look right? No. Did it feel right? No. Was it a place they had never been before? Yes. Was it something that they had never seen before? Yes. But they were led by the Holy Spirit. 
You're going to have to make a lot of decisions on a personal basis as a family, as individuals. A lot of times we're going to have to just re-examine everything every day. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. And my wife and I talked about it this week. And I'll remind you here because she and I really talked about it. If we're not led by the Holy Spirit, we're being misled. We're being misled. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the Exodus chapter 15, verse 2, The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I'll prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Now, you got to understand, when the cloud moved them there, it didn't look right. It was no longer, this is going to be just an easy battle. No, it was a battle. It was a battle of learning to walk by faith and not by sight. We understand that, brothers and sisters. We are emotionally driven people. And the children of Israel literally were standing there, and I can just imagine the conversations that were taking place. But as God was speaking to Moses, God had a plan all along. God was in complete control. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Exodus, chapter 13, verse 21. Exodus 13, 21. Can I remind you there were many times that the nation of Israel balked against what God was doing. Murmured, complained, were disruptive, were even talked about wanting to go back, wanting to go back and hide in Egypt. But Exodus 13, 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So no matter how bad they got personally, no matter how strong they got in rebelling against what God was doing, God never left them and never forsake them. He is not going to leave us. He is not going to forsake us. And I want to talk to you personally as a family right this moment. You're going to make personal family decisions over the next few weeks, a few months, as the Lord tarries as we go through this crisis that we're in as a nation. Do not let those decisions be swayed by anybody else but the Holy Spirit. May he be your guide. It's been, it's been a hard time, a lot of hard lessons learned by all of us, including myself. I'll be honest with you, I have... Wanted to be back with you so much, so many different times. I've told my wife about so many things. But I can assure you of one thing. In God's timing, God has it under control. In God's timing, God will bring everything back. Understand with me, he is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our help in a present time. Go to Psalms 48 verse 14. For, the, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. He is our guide even unto death. I think like the children of Israel, there have been many times that you and I, throughout my life, I can name numerous times that I did not follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I, I made financial decisions without praying about it. I may have bought something without praying about it. I may have done something on behalf of my family without praying about it or done something on behalf of loved ones and not prayed about it. And it, it brought back a lot of circumstances. Like my wife said this morning, there were seeds that I sowed that I had to reap because of those mistakes that I made. But I'm reminded, and I'll share with you a few verses here. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For it said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Now, don't matter, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. There has to be a place in your spiritual DNA that you get that says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For it said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper. 
I will not fear what man shall do unto me. If we will start worrying about what God is wanting us to do, where God is wanting us to go, where God is wanting me to go, where God is dealing with my heart and my life, it changes how we look at things. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them, listen, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Let me make a plug here for a missionary. And I will share this from our own personal perspective. When Shelby said that she was going back to the mission field, that God had called her, you can understand the questions in a natural that a dad would have. You can understand in the natural the questions that a mom would have or family members would have. And then when everything has been going on even today, where our missionaries are around the world and many of them are sitting in homes, cannot go out and do ministry. Can I assure you of one thing? The Holy Spirit has not left them. He is still guiding them. He is still directing them. He is equipping them. He is empowering them. And they're doing ministry for the kingdom of God. And they're getting ready to walk in a place they've never gone before. They're going to walk blindly into things they've never done, places they've never gone, but they're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. And we stand here and we cheer them on going, yes, go missionary, go into that unknown place, go into those unknown territories, do that for the kingdom of God. Maybe God is telling you and I to do the same thing here now too. To go into an unknown territory that we've never been in before. To walk through it by, blindly, but being led by the Holy Spirit. Emotions, doubts, fears are normal. But being led by the Spirit, there are times that He is going to tell you to be still. There's times He's going to tell you to move. There's times that He's going to cause you to walk right through the storms. There are other times that he's going to hide you by a brook. There are times that he is going to tell you just to go into a cave and wait. Oh, pastor, no, he doesn't. He told David that. He told Elijah that. He told Paul and Peter not to go in a direction that they wanted to go. He redirected the disciples many different times. They were led by the Spirit. As Pentecost comes, I want you to understand the cloud no longer is something that is seen by everyone, but it now dwells inside of you and I. The Spirit of God dwells inside of me and you. He is going to direct and He's going to guide and He's going to direct you and I. Look what it says in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 12. John 16 and 12. I've yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when He, the Spirit of truth, shall is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he, he, sh whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, he shall receive a mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I thee, shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Let me read that again. Listen very carefully. John 16, 12 through 15. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Can I give you a little quick reminder, church family? When you had the small church on Riderwood, you knew that God wanted you to go to a bigger place. God showed it to you. God revealed it to you. And look what we have now. 
When God spoke to men in our church congregations, they did call them into the full-time ministry and they were to walk away from professions. They were walking away from family businesses. God has provided. God has made a way. When God called men and women to go on the mission field, God provides. God makes a way. It doesn't look natural. It doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. But when we walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh, God will guide. God will direct. As the Lord spoke to the nation of Israel and said to them, As long as the cloud is over the tabernacle, as long as the fire by night is over the tabernacle, you stay right here. But you anticipate the move constantly. Day and night, with anticipation, you wait for the trumpets to sound and for you to pack everything up in an orderly fashion and move. You may sit here for a year and not move. You may sit here for months and not move. You may sit here one day and move the next day. But see, what God was teaching them, and is what He's teaching us, is His ways are not our ways, and His thoughts are not our thoughts. And brothers and sisters, I can assure of you one thing, He will take care of His church. He will prevail. He will be victorious. The gates of hell will not prevail against His church. And I want you to understand that. But it turn with me as we close to the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait. I say wait upon the Lord. I think this is the hardest thing in the world to do. Is wait. You ever had somebody tell you just to be a few minutes? God's telling us just to wait on Him. I hadn't been preaching to the choir. I've been preaching to myself this morning. I've had to learn to wait on God. God has ways of getting our attention. But we have to learn to wait. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me for just a moment? And would you lay everything aside and would you just say a very simple prayer? Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, direct me. May I not look to the right or to the left. May I not covet what others are doing or not doing. But may I wait until the cloud moves by day or the fire moves by night. You can speak to me individually. God, you filled every one of them with the power of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. But individually, they each individually had a ministry they needed to accomplish. And you sent them out individually. Individually, they were led, guided, and directed by your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you that corporately we do move together. I thank you that corporately as a body we do make decisions together. But God, I believe that you're speaking to us also individually. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us. When the cloud tarried, Long upon the tabernacle many days, the children of Israel kept charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And when the cloud moved, they moved. When the Spirit moves, we move. Worship with us in just a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. Yes, Lord. When I just sang another song.
Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart Hallelujah. to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry that I forgot that you're enough. Oh, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Yes, yes. college, the unknown of how it's going to look like, education of school, how long your job will last, and even some of you that we know, your hours have been cut back, and you're having to make some very hard personal decisions, but I can trust one thing, the Holy Spirit. He will guide and He will direct. Would you do me a favor and not make a knee-jerk reaction decision? But would you meditate and pray upon it and give it to God first? Don't react and then have to back up. Trust God first. Father, in this such a troubled hour that we live in, all kind of decisions are having to be made on a personal basis with our income, with our jobs, our children's education, financial decisions that we're having to make, rumors of things that may be coming that we cannot control. 
and we blindly walk into it, not knowing what will be there. But God, remind us that we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't let fake news direct us, but we let the Holy Spirit direct us. And we honor you for this. In thy name we pray, amen and amen.